Now I'm going to go over where you can find alpha brushes and how you can use those on the Brushify landscape auto material. So the very first things first, I'm going to take this landscape that we made earlier with the uh, sculpting tools and I'm going to flatten it out. So I'm just going to use the eyedropper to pick a flat part of the terrain. And then I'm just going to steamroll over everything. So as you can see, I've just flattened out everything that we've done and we're back to uh, a completely flat plane. Uh, don't worry about the tiling textures for now. We'll be going over that in the next section. Uh, and we're just going to concentrate on actually sculpting the landscape and, and going over how we can use alpha brushes to add more detail. So the very first thing is, where do we actually find the alpha brushes? Well, if we go to the sculpt menu, uh, sorry, sculpt tool, and then choose alpha. So you'll usually start on circle and just choose alpha. And then you've got this texture slot. It probably won't be filled in. So if it isn't, just go to content, brushify, and then choose alpha brushes. And in that folder, uh, you'll have all of the alpha brushes uh, for the various brushify, brushify packs that you've installed. So at this point, I'm going to jump into my web browser and I'm going to show you all of the Brushify packs. So obviously you've got all the different Brushify packs on Unreal Marketplace. And uh, if you go to the product pages, you'll be able to find along with screenshots of the pack uh, example levels, you'll also be able to find screenshots of the alpha brushes uh, that come with the pack. And the screenshots will be shown as sort of meshes uh, because you also get dis distance meshes or distance mesh versions of those brushes uh, with every pack as well. Um, but generally, uh, those will be all of the sculptable alphas uh, for every single pack. And those come in the form of a file, just like this one. Uh, so this is the Br uh, Brushify Morelands pack uh, alpha brush. I'm going to jump to the product page. As you can see, they're right here. So you've got the alpha brush, the distance mesh, alpha brush, distance mesh, and so on. And uh, if we jump back into Unreal, now we can see that the Morelands pack, if we double click on that, if we go into the color channels, we've actually got all of those four alphas stored in that same file. So if I just untick all of these, that's the green channel. This is the red channel the blue channel, and the alpha. So you can see that all of those alphas that are shown on the pack are actually stored in a single file. And what, now we can drag and drop that file into our texture slot of our sculpt alpha brush. And now you can see that we've actually got a preview of how the, the, the actual brush will sculpt. Uh, I'm just going to re re reset all of these settings to their defaults so that we're all on the same page. And obviously when you first start out, you'll see this very tiny little thing. It almost looks like a game character because it kind of follows the cursor along. Um, looks like a fish or something, uh, but we don't want that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to untick auto rotate. And now you can see that it's no longer following the, surf uh, the, the cursor. And the next thing I'm going to do is make it bigger so I can increase the brush size. If that's not big enough, you can actually uh, manually type in something even bigger. So 70,000 here. And now we've got an even more massive brush size. So don't worry about that hard cap at eight. Uh, just, just add a, a few zeros and then you'll hit the other cap. And the real maximum cap is 65,500. And uh, yeah, now if we actually click, you can see that nothing actually happened. I'm just going to control Z. Uh, and the reason for that is that the tool strength is set to 0 0.3. So you want to set that something much higher. So I'm going to choose six. And now I'm going to click. And now you can see that we've got all of this detail out of absolutely nowhere. And this is the power of sculpting with alpha brushes. You get detail very, very, very quickly. And if I zoom in, of course, this is still using the Brushify Landscape Auto material. So if I get very, very close to the terrain, it becomes populated with the nice little fluffy grass and all of those extra Brushify texture details uh, start to cover all of the landscape out of the box. 
So yeah, this is really you know one of the fastest workflows you can get for generating terrain. And because you can change the size of the brush, the rotation, you can add multiple brushes. Let's do that now. Start adding a few to the horizon. Um, you can of course just click down and it will add some some brushes there. I'm just going to control Z that. But another great feature is you can actually rotate the texture and then click. And now you can see that we're basically getting different variations on those mountains now. So it can look different every time. It's just like placing an object. So yeah, fantastic. And uh, the other thing to note is that if you don't want to have a situation like this, where for instance, I um, let's try to do this. If I actually paint a alpha on top of another alpha, I'll sometimes get the issue that we get a massive sort of high section like this. Uh, it doesn't look too realistic. What we can actually do is take clay brush, and this will sort of avoid that buildup. So now you can see that that same area doesn't have a uh, a large uh, mountain that got generated because it's not working in a sort of additive way. It's working as a sort of clay mode where it only puts detail into areas that already have a slope. And this is really a way of preserving uh, an object's detail, uh, sorry, an object's overall shape or a landscape's overall shape while adding texture detail or, sorry, uh, sculpting detail. So I'm going to give you an example of that now. If I go to Sculpt and I go back to the Circle tool, I'm just going to make two circles. I'm just going to put one uh, here. Uh, maybe I'll make it a little bit taller and a little bit smaller. Okay, one there. Let's put another one there. And then I'm going to go back to the alpha uh, brush. And on the first one on the left, I'm just going to place, uh, I'm just going to paint down, I'm just going to rotate a little bit and then click. And you can see that it's made this really big um, mountain sort of all the way on top of that sculpted area. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing on my other little mountain. I'm going to tick clay brush though, and then click. And as you can see, it still added some detail there, but that mountain is much, much smaller on the, uh, the other mound. And that's because clay, uh, clay mode was on. So clay mode is really a way of making sure that you retain the overall landscape shape uh, and just simply add details. So that's uh, an explanation of that mode. Just going to flatten out this terrain again. And we're going to go back to the first brush that we created. Now, of course, we've just been adding the, pretty much the same uh, landscape brush over and over again. But it's actually possible uh, to paint down different sculpting brushes. Uh, so as I said before, each Brushify Alpha brush comes with four uh, textures built into it in the various texture channels. And you can actually switch between those texture channels by switching between uh, this parameter here. So we can go to the green channel. And as you can see, we've now got a completely different brush. So I'm going to paint that down. Let's rotate a little bit and then click. And now we've got a completely different shape or mountain, mountain range. And if I go to the blue, to paint that one down, maybe I find a better angle for it, something like this. And that's a completely different mountain as well. And that's the fourth one, also a different mountain range. So you can see that by using these brushes together in combination, uh, you can get some really powerful and very fast results. So yeah, I'm just going to experiment a little bit by um, creating a few uh, little mountains off in the distance here and just, you know, showing the process and having a bit of fun with it. So yeah, just really playing around with the settings, seeing what it's like to, you know, to add these to the terrain and uh, getting some enjoyment out of being able to work so quickly and easily. You know, if I want a mountain there in the distance, bam, now I have it. 
You know, if I want to have that little line, you see that line in the distance there broken up by some mountains, you can reduce the tool strength a little bit and then just click right in the distance. Now I've got some mountains there. It looks like the horizon, you know, doesn't end. And if you ever think that two mountains look the same, you know, if you get this kind of thing where, oh, look, that looks a bit the same as that, just uh, edit undo, rotate a little bit and uh, bring it a completely new, unique shape. And so on. So now we can just uh, start filling stuff in. It's really cool to make sure that you think of um, this sort of visit from an art point of view as well, that we want to have many, many layers going off into the distance. So perhaps we want to have, you know, a mountain range here, but then we want at the very, very back, a really, really far distant mountain. And now we've got that distant mountain there, but maybe we don't want it to just end as quickly as there. You know, we want it to actually have a little bit more, um, a little bit more going on. So let's put another little friend of that mountain in front of it. And now we've got even more complexity. And of course, because it's Brushify, we can now just hit play and we're in the game. We're already running around. This is Unreal Engine, so we can just jump around and explore our new world. I love this workflow because it's just so simple, um, so elegant, it's very easy, doesn't need um, you know, any time generating things. You can, you can make ultimate artistic choices on the fly. Uh, and you're really just painting, um, but in real time. So yeah, I absolutely love this. So let's go back to the top of our mountain again. And of, of course you can see that the, this landscape here looks very flat. Uh, let's see if we can break that up a little bit. You can also hold down shift, of course, uh, to invert the terrain. So here you can see I've now used the alpha brush invertedly. And uh, that also looks very cool. Let's rotate it a little bit and put some more, some sort of recesses in the terrain, you know? Because you always get that in real life too. You know, you don't get perfectly level terrains. Mountains go up and down and uh, you can really get a lot of variation in nature. Whenever you're worried about um, anything looking too samey, simply switch your brush to a different brush and maybe give it a bit of a rotate and then you're going to get more variation just like in nature. And also remember that, you know, you can put as much detail down on the terrain as you like in this, you know, you've got 2000 by 2000 um, sort of pixels to work with. So, uh, you know, there's no, the sky's the limit to how much data you can actually put onto this landscape. Uh, you can really go crazy with it and put a lot, a lot, a lot of details in there um, without affecting the performance. You know, you're always going to have a very performant terrain as long as you chose the right settings at the very beginning. So definitely try out this uh, this alpha brush mode. Uh, make yourself a few little landscapes like this. You know, just play around with it. Try and get friendly with the tool, and uh, try and figure out um, for yourself. You know how how all the different tick boxes work. Um, they're really not that complicated. You know, there's really just the tool strength, the size, uh, a couple of options for the textures, the auto rotate and the clay brush. Um, and th th there's really not many options. So that's one of the things that makes it such a great workflow. It's very, very simple. Uh, the only sort of difficult part is actually having the brushes themselves. Um, but, you know, if you get Brushify, uh, those brushes are already included there. Uh, and, you know, of course, this is, uh, this is stuff that was already generated from, you know, satellite data, but, you can also use your own data from World Machine or World Creator or you know something like that and uh, convert and create your own alpha brushes. Don't be afraid to try sculpting your landscape multiple times. Here you can see I started from scratch again and I'm just placing alpha brushes all around the different corners of the map. That's because I wanted to create a world that the player could run around in the middle of and look at all angles, 360 degrees around, and always see a horizon with some distant mountains. Once you've placed down your mountain ranges and done some sculpting work, you can start sort of location scouting and trying to find places that, you know, could potentially become vista spots or sort of key art spots um, where things could look more impressive. 
Here I really like the way this V-shaped valley looks, and I could really imagine the road going through it and then leading towards the city on the horizon. It's always good to jump into the game and get a feel for the scale and how things are going to look. Don't settle on a location too quickly. Here you can see that I'm tweaking the lighting again and the sky dome and sort of balancing the sun and skylight uh, because I wanted to get that sunset feel again. That's really the great thing about this workflow. Anything can be changed at any point in the process and all in real time. So if you're not happy with the shape of your landscape or you're not happy with your lighting, you can quickly make those changes at any point in time. And remember, jumping into the game is always just a click away.